Welcome everybody to an LT3 group training session here. Today we're going to go over capturing this kitchen here in the LT3 Raptor software with our 2D, 3D. We're going to go over everything from measuring, editing, creating job details, adding photos, using the nesting portion of the app, how we're going to save this, transfer it to other people on the team here. Just so you all know and you're all aware, we will be recording this meeting here and we'll be able to share this with you uh, so you guys can watch this back at any time. Follow along with us with your own laser, that kind of thing. Um, if you have the laser set up now, you may be able to go along with us here. Okay, we're going to talk about a basic introduction. Um, what I got here is pretty standard kitchen, pretty standard L-shaped kitchen with a little 45 degree in the middle or uh, off the off the corner there. Uh, and we got a standard stove opening here. So as far as basic setup for targets go, you know, I'm I'm right here in front of my sink center as we as we recommend. So I am blind to the left style of my stove opening here. So I have one T target set up there. I got my right plane block all the way over there on the front edge of that cabinet. Back plane block over here. Left plane block and then I just got some lines lined up on this cabinet edge that I'm in line to. So I consider this what I, what I would call a bad angle. So I'm using pin blocks, just lining the line up, shooting the line for that bad angle over there. And then again here, T-target for my style. And, and here's my right plane block set up here on the front edge of my cabinets. So this is pretty much all I need set up to capture this job here. Now you should be seeing my screen being shared there on your computer. Hopefully, like I say, if you have me pinned, the little thumbtack pinned down, and then in the settings there, your view set to spotlight, it should have me on one side of your screen and then my lasers on the other side of the screen there. Uh, so what we're looking at right here is the home screen, what we call the home screen in this software. These are where we're gonna be able to see all of our jobs that are currently synced up to the cloud here. Okay, um, so as long as we connect up to the internet, sync our jobs, they'll all be available here on any PC you're on. So one of the major differences here between LT1 and the new software here is that we're on the cloud-based system. So you can install this Raptor software on as many PCs as you like at your office, and you just use your login to sign in and, and have access to the software there. Unlike with LT1, you had to have seats of software, right? So once we sync this up, we could walk over to our desktop, log in on our desktop, and then see all of our jobs we did that day as well without any kind of manual transfer of jobs there, as long as we sync up the tablet to the cloud there, okay? So this is what the home screen is. And again, this is where we can see all of our jobs. Here up in the top right corner of our screen, You'll see a little add button up there. That's pretty much where we're going to add our new jobs at. So up in the top right, again, we click on add right there. Pops this up. If you guys use numbers as a reference for your job, we can type the number in here. If we use a name, we can type the name in here. Show it up. Pick up location. This is if you have multiple locations, we can set where this job's going to be fabricated and where the installers would pick it up to take it out to the install. Edge styles here. You can have multiple different edge styles created in this software. Um, things I could uh, uh, use for an example here would be like maybe you have a countertop set of colors. Maybe you have a fireplace set of colors to differentiate different edges, different things on what you're measuring there. So anybody looking at those drawings, editing those things, know when they're looking at the firebox, the TV cutout, um, what they're mitering, what the ceiling is, the floor. These are the other kinds of styles, layer sets we could use. Um, so I'm just gonna use the default set here. Right under that, we can open the software here with either in a calibration page, which is currently selected, or we switch that little toggle right there and it goes to blank drawing page there. So this is asking you, do you want to just open up the software and start drawing something without connecting the laser and shooting with it? 
that's blank drawing page. If we turn that back on, it turns the calibration page. This is when we're actually going to connect up our laser and create a template using the laser here, which is what we're going to demonstrate here. So we got calibration page turned on. We hit the add button in the bottom corner of that, that window there. Now here we are looking at the overview of our screen here. So we're in the templating portion of the app here, which you see up in the top center, we have templating, details, photos, nesting. We'll talk about the different portions of the app here later. One thing you'll notice uh, with the layout of the screen, we have all of our file, edit, view, draw. We have those drop downs up at the top of the screen. Um, Right below that, we have the home button to where we can go back home and view all of our jobs again. Uh, we have a check button right there to check for any break in the shapes that we're creating here before we go to export it or send it to our saw. Next here, we have the page button. So we can click on that. This is where we can see all the pages we have created Can select them from here. We can add drawing pages. The capture page is grayed out right now because I did not connect my laser up yet. Um, but this is where we're going to add more areas to capture. Then we could duplicate, mirror, and create CNC saw pages from this location as well. One other thing we could do is hold our finger down on the page right here for about two seconds and let off. And then this can allow us to name our page right here. So we're going to create the kitchen. Any kind of notes that we, we would want to add specifically to this area, this one template right here, we want to add into here. This is how this is going to show up on our shop sheet when we go to create that. And then this is also where we can delete pages. So the remove button there, if we create a page on an error or want to move pieces off of a page to another page, this is where we can delete those pages. We're going to hit the save button right here. And now if we look up in the little window there, we got our page named kitchen with P1 in parentheses at the end there. Again, we have templating, job details, photos, and nesting, the different portions. We'll go through that once we get there. Now, if you look up in the top right corner, right above the quick action button there, you'll see my laser head is kind of grayed out and it says searching right there. So this software is actually actively looking for my laser head right now. Now, what we want to do is make sure our USB is plugged in. And then we want to make sure, of course, that our 2D lock is locked up at the top of our laser, making sure that pin is depressed in. Those two red dots are lined up. Then we're going to tap on the silver power button of our laser there. It's going to turn on. And you're going to see that this the software is automatically going to find my laser here. Okay. If you ever get the disco battery is low, just ignore that. Um, now it's asking you, this is when this matters, of making sure our 2D lock is locked at this moment in time. This is when this is super important. Make sure our 2D lock is engaged, locking that vertical ring into place, and then we can hit continue right here. And the laser is automatically going to connect up to our software there, and we're ready to go. And if you look up above the quick action button now in our top right corner of our screen there, you see the picture of the lasers, nice and bright and shiny, and it says connected right there. Okay, so now right below that, we have the quick action menu. Some of you are familiar with quick actions. We tap this to open this. I got mine set up with a bunch of customized uh, quick actions in here right now. We'll talk about how to add these, how to edit this as well, but that's where we toggle the quick actions on and off. Uh, we have a couple of my favorite buttons up there. We made them nice and big up at the top right corner of the screen. Undo and redo, right? Use those all the time. And then we have right below that capture button. And then our, our kind of standard buttons down the side there. In this software here, we're pretty much going to work editing our template, creating our template. Just about all the editing we're going to do is going to be on the sidebar here using these buttons here. Okay. Right below that, at the bottom of that, we have the best fit button and our rotate button. Now, up and to the left of that, you'll see where it says cabinets there. We click on that drop down. This is, pops up our new little color menu here. 
Okay, so this is where we're going to actively switch through these colors as we're creating this template, as we're editing this template to make sure that we have a printout that lets everybody know what kind of edges uh, they're looking at there, gives them the details of the job there on that based off of the colors here. And then this software is very smart in the way it uses colors. Um, so we're going to want to make sure that we use the colors in the right situations and it'll help us in our editing to not make mistakes. Okay. So we got cabinet color selected right here. So the first thing it's asking us to do is to set a plane. Okay. Now, one of the things you may notice on my software right now, I have my little command bar, what we call up in the top. So if you look up at the top left corner where it says home, right below that, it says capture plane. Step one of three, capture a point on the left. Now, your user interface might have that bar down at the bottom of the screen. Maybe you're like, hey, Aaron, I like it up at the top there. How do I do that? Well, we're going to go to settings here, app settings. And now we got the little UX button here selected which is the first one to the right of application. And then you'll see up there, we got quick panel location. You want it on the left or the right. Action bar, you want it on the left or the right. That bar I was just talking about is the command bar location. If I select bottom, and so you can see there's multiple different windows we can adjust here. This is where you do it. We go back. Now, I'm gonna go to shoot a point here. Okay. I'm going to have to add a new page to get my plane back up. And so now <clears throat> we can set a plane here and you'll see that that command bar is down at the bottom of my screen. So where it says capture plane step one of three, it's down in the bottom left corner now. So you can adjust in this by going to settings, app settings, and where some of these bars, some of these are at. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to capture a plane here. So I'm going to aim, you know, just like setting our plane here, I'm going to use my pin box. I'm going to aim at the top horizontal line on the pin block here. Some of you may have noticed that I have uh, black pin blocks here. They're different color uh, inverted from the other pin blocks that we used to sell. These are our new ones. Um, they are slightly easier to aim at and see that your laser dot is on the line. That's why we did this. Um, obviously, they're on our store, available to everyone at this moment in time, and it's what's being shipped with all the brand new lasers as well. So once we shoot our left right back here, now we see the capture button highlighted here. So this is when we're going to shoot something with the laser. What do you want to capture with the laser? We're in capture mode. And now you see we just have a little sidebar here with our buttons. We got line mode, right? Which is what we're going to live in probably 99% of our life. We're going to measure in line mode. We have the ability to create arcs, circles, crosses, openings, center lines, and our reposition, our laser is here as well. So we're in line mode right now. We're in the cabinet color. Now, if we look down in the bottom left corner of our screen here, where we see capture line, it has a mode there and it says continuous right now. When we click on that button, we're going to see it pop up the three different types of modes we can measure lines in. Okay. Mode number one that we see there is two point. So basically, what that means is we can shoot two points across this face frame here. We don't have to hit start new line or anything. It's going to create that line, that entity by itself based off of those two points. Then we could come right to the 45, shoot two points on that, creates that line by itself, not attaching it to anything without having to hit the start new line button. Okay, one difference from our old software. Continuous, this is what we're going to use when we want to scribe our drywall here, shoot multiple points on these walls to see exactly what those walls are doing, continually connecting segments of line together as we go down the wall there. Uh, last but not least is auto fill it. Certainly one of my favorite commands to use here when capturing. It's 
It's for two point edges, finished edges. It's automatically going to fillet our edges together as we go. We have to go in a general direction though. So the way I'm going to shoot this, I'm going to start on my back left pin block that I have lined up with this edge returning back here. I'm going to start on the back left one, and then I'm going to come around the face of this two points per edge, and you're going to see it connect it all up for us as we go here. All right, so that's the mode I'm going to start in. So I'm going to tap auto fill it on the screen here. Now I'm coming over again. I'm aiming on my pin block at that leftmost uh, line that's lined up with the edge. Point one. Here we go, point two. There's my first line. Now I'm just going to come right down onto the face frame to come across the front there before my little 45 in the corner here. And you see with auto fill it there, it automatically put that corner together. I'm not hitting start new line or anything. I'm just shooting two points per edge. We come right around the corner there, shoot another two for to capture the 45. Then in this software, what we recommend doing when making stove openings, what what here at Laser Products, what we believe is the best looking stove opening is by shooting all the way across our cabinet run here to create one line, one entity running all the way across there. Uh, we can talk a little bit about that once we go to make the stove opening here, uh, why we're doing that. Um, now, once I shoot that, I'm going to come into colors because I have a pantry panel here. I'm going to switch to my panel color, and then I'm going to shoot two points on my pantry panel there. Capture that. Now, I'm going to come into my color again, change into walls. Now we're going to scribe our drywall here. And my mode, bottom left corner, this is where I'm going to have to switch from auto fill it to continuous now. And now I'm going to aim at the back wall here and I'm going to start shooting points. One thing you guys may notice is this, this software does take the data in quite a bit faster than our old software. So you can really get some rhythm going on with this thing and you could scribe pretty fast. As you can see, I'm going about every six inches, three inches out of the corner. And we shoot right into the drywall corner to capture all that mud buildup that that guy floated in there. Then we come three inches out the other side and then we continue on with our six to eight, what we recommend for tile, which I know that's probably what a lot of you guys are running into out there. And now I'm going to come about an inch past my edge because that's where our overhang is going to hang out. So here we go. We got our wall scribed, cabinets captured. Next thing I'm going to do is mark my sink center. So I'm going to tap on the center line function over here on the right hand side. Down at the bottom of the screen there, you see it says capture center line, bottom left corner. Step one of three, select a line to base the center line off of. So we click the edge that represents our sink run. Then it's going to give us a line that's perfectly perpendicular to this front edge that we just clicked on. Straight up, we want to go up into the piece. So we're going to click up in this situation. And now we're going to aim our laser here, line it up with our sink mark that we made on top of the cabinet there, and shoot our sink center. There we go. So you see, um, if you're familiar with the center line drop in from the old software, we built that in to capturing your center lines here. Okay. And gave you that little tag line out the front there. So we have a snap point that intersects with our finished edge. Once we add it, no extra step of extending that out. So definitely trying to help you in every way uh, to make this a little quicker here. Now we're going to go to the opening function. This is one of my favorite new functions by far. Um, we have, we're going to change the flat polish because we always flat polish these stoves, right? Now there is three different modes in this opening uh, function here. So we got with, with we're kind of talking about our standard stove that we're going to slide all the way back to the wall there. Right. It's our basic range that the majority of our customers are going to have there. OK, now with in depth, that's for when we have a farm sink, more like a U shaped cutout. We can set the width. We could pull tape on that sink and say, hey, the sink's 30 inches. 
we want eighth inch negative. We could set the width in the software there to 29 and three quarter. Then we could measure off the cabinet face to the back edge of that sink, subtract an eighth off of that, set that at our depth, shoot left, right, and back, and it'll make a perfect cutout for our farm sink there. We could also do that for some of these new cooktops that we're seeing with our knobs and handles out in front of the cooktop. So it's almost like a farm sink cutout for some of these new cooktops that are out there. Now, with in-depth with seams, this is when you have that, what they might call a slide-in range to where that glass top of that range may overhang your countertop. And you want that two inch bridge or that two inch rail running behind that. So we can set it to width and depth with seams. We're dealing on 24 inch cabinets. We set that depth to 22. It's going to make us that two inch rail back there and seam it on each side when we create all this for us. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to do standard width in this situation. So we're going to click on width right there. And you see, we got the width. We can set this width to whatever we want. Obviously, as long as the cabinets are that wide, um, you know, if you want to make it 30, you want to make it 30 and an eighth. We obviously just got to make sure we got the room there to fit that 30 and an eighth in there if the guy's making it 30 or 30 and 16. Okay. Right? So here we're going to do 30. And what we're going to do first, it says select the front edge line to base the opening off of. So we're going to click the line that represents our stove. Now I'm going to measure onto my T target right here, which represents my left style in space. Again, I can't physically aim my laser onto that style to the left there, which is why I'm using this T target in this situation. We shoot that point. And now on this one, I don't need a target. I can shoot right onto the style right there. Quarter inch, you know, that, that, that quarter inch style, three quarter inch. Um, shoot on that. And there we go. It just made that opening for us based off of the center here. So this is what the software just did there. All right. So what it just did there is anytime we let measure a line, anytime we create a line, we're going to get a beginning, a center, and an end snap point all the time created on every single line we make here. Okay. So by us simply measuring from style to style, no matter how wide this opening is, the software is finding the center of it. And then what it's doing there is it's drawing a line in the center perpendicular to the front edge that we shot all the way across here. And then it's taking that line in this situation, since we have it set at 30, it's offsetting this line 15 inches this way and 15 inches this way. So we got perfect 90 degree corners, perfectly parallel lines from each other, exactly 30 inches apart based off the center of the front of this, right? So it don't matter if this opening's 30 and three eighths, 30 and a half, 30 and a quarter. We're in the center. We're going to overhang the styles in the front equally on each side. Okay. So that's what the software just did for us there and filleted it all together, made it in the flat polished color. So it's definitely one of my most exciting uh, features of the new software here. You, if you were an LT1, you know how many buttons that just took to do all that. We got that all automated now. So super awesome function. We make stoves on a lot of jobs that we go to. So it's going to save you guys a lot of time in the editing of that. Okay. Um, as far as capturing goes... Is there anybody that has any questions about what we did to just shoot that right there? No? Okay. I guess I'm doing all right then. All right. So, number one rule in measuring. What do we always say? Oh, hey. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony. Um, Number one rule in measuring, right? The one thing that I love about digital templating and, and one thing that made me feel good about my templates that I made when I was out in the field creating templates um, is that I could check myself with my tape. 
after I created this template here. One of my favorite things about digital templating, I can leave this house knowing that that template I made matched my tape measure. And as long as they don't move anything on me, everything that we fabricate is going to fit as long as we edit it properly, right? So what we're going to do here is we're just going to fill it some of these open corners together. So we're going to go to fill it here on the right-hand sidebar. You see, we got sharp fill it up at the top there. And now we're just going to click my cabinet edge out in front there. And then I'm going to click my panel line on the side. Now I'm using my little, my little Microsoft pen here. So I got a little hover over. And you see here, uh, if you're a mouse user on a desktop, or if you got a pen like this, as opposed to just using your finger, this laser does give you, this laser, this software does give you previews of what it's going to do when we fill it that together. Okay, so we click that other edge. There we go. We fill it in. Now, one beauty of this new software is it don't matter if we pick that wall on that part of that wall right there, and then we pick our panel, no matter what, it puts the end of that wall to our panel there. Fix that problem. You used to get double lines on your wall. You can't do that anymore. So over here, we pick the wall. We pick that cabinet edge. There we go. Those are the only two corners we had to fill it because we shot right into the corner there. We auto fill it at all the front. The stove filleted all that together for us. So all we had to do is fill it those three corners together. Now, we're going to go to distance here. So distance is what I like to look at as my on-site verification, right? These are things where I can check just a single line up at the top there. We got a new parallel function. We'll talk a little bit about that. Points is, is this similar to distance in LT1. So we can use a point to point click here. Now down below that, the reason why there's that little divider bar right there below it is because dimensions, angles, and radii are toggles. So we tap on dimension and it toggles this on. Now, one improvement we made, you may notice on this software is we no longer show you every single segment of the back scribe wall. We give you the overalls now. Okay, so I love this new dimensions, toggle on, toggle off. Now we can go around, pull tape, check everything, make sure we're good and happy, right? So one thing I just want to point out here to you guys, talking about that stove opening again. My stove opening here, I'm a painter, I'm no carpenter. These, these cabinets are set at 30 and three quarters apart, okay? So I know that I'm going to overhang the front on this side, three eighths. And I'm going to overhang the front on that side, three eighths. So when I'm looking at that 24 and three quarter, that front edge of my, of my side over here, I know that that is going to be three eighths bigger than what my tape measure physically shows, right? Same with coming out of that corner out of the 45 here to that, to that style right there. You see, we got 84 and three eighths. That, that dimension is 84 on the head there. So that's showing us that we have three-eighths of overhang there at the front left and the front right. Now, we all know what's happening with these cabinets. They could be old cabinets. They could be brand new cabinets, but who knows what the floor is, what the wall is. So we know that these cabinets on the stove opening may not be parallel, which is another reason why we can't really use them to create our opening or else we would match the stove like this. Even though we had 30 inches at the back, we might have 30 and a quarter at the front because we know those are never parallel to each other, right? So one thing we're going to do is verify this. This is one dimension that I verified on every single template I've ever made in my life. That 24 and 9 sixteenths, really all we want to know is when we come over here and tape measure out of the panel to the back corner here, which is actually 23 and 15 sixteenths on this. I got 24 and 9 sixteenths. That's telling me how much I'm overhanging the back edge of that panel there. That's all we care about. There is no perfect overhang on a stove at the back. The only way it's perfect is you can't see the panel. That's all we're worried about. So we just want to make sure our tape measure, when we pull tape out of that drywall corner to that end right there, I could tell you it's 126 inches. Our laser's there giving us 126 and 3 eighths. That's telling us how much that stone's overhanging the back edge of that panel. We just want to make sure we're covering it because we know they're out of square and whatnot. Right? Okay. Um, 
All right. So that's verifying um, our perimeters, right? Now, things like sync center, we can tap dimensions and turn those off. Again, these other buttons are toggles. I could tap angles, and you see it toggles the angles on. You can see we got pretty 90 degree corners at the front sides of our stove right there. And of course, just like every other job on the planet, nothing else is 90. Nothing's really 90 unless we make it 90, right? So here, now we want to check sink center, let's say. I'm going to check it off that panel to my sink center because my stove has overhang on it. So it's not like I can accurately pull tape to that 100%. So I'm going to go off the panel there. I'm going to use this new parallel function. I'm going to click the little tagline out in front of my sink center first. And then I'm going to click the panel. Bam. It gives us the top, the center, and the bottom of our little line segment there. There we see 85 and an eighth. Real easy to pull tape on that. Check that. Um, I always had to check sinks from both sides. I'm going to click that. And now I'm going to click the wall out here. Check that out. So there it's telling me 96 and an eighth from the wall to that edge. Or maybe I missed that wall segment. There we go. That's closer. Still 96 and an eighth. Right. So that's one of the new parallel functions for checking distance. Pretty awesome function there. Um, there's more uses to it too that I'll show you uh, throughout here. But that's how we're going to verify that. Then, of course, we got points to where if you did want to go corner to sink center, you can click point to point and get that dimension that fashion as well. Okay. So now, once we verify everything and we're happy, right? I know some people can't handle how that drawing looks on their screen. This rotate button, we did improve this substantially. Now we have, if you see when I click it, it pops up this little slider right here. And you can tap and drag that slider. Oh, man, how cool is that? You can spin the drawing. Now we can get it close. And just like in the original LT1, now we can click on, say, this think run. We are dead square to that line, just like you always were in LT1. So you can still hit rotate and click the specific edge you want to work off of, just like you used to do in LT1. But you'll see some of the functionality we added in here. We added things like perpendicular. So some of that doesn't matter. As you notice, the sink drop-in, I did not have to rotate. I picked the line I wanted it square to. So you can't make that mistake anymore of dropping that line in slightly off on the angle. Okay? Now, typically what I like to do editing-wise here is start adding my overhangs first. So I'm going to go to Finished. And now this is where these quick actions... Okay, I can really come into play here. So I have some programmed in here. Let me see. I got one. So right here, I got inch and a half overhang. I named it that because that's the one I'm going to use for overhang. All right. Now, one of the things about, let's just talk about offset real quick here. So when we go to offset here, you're going to see we got an offset point, element, edge, a polygon, or split a shape. So one of the two main offsets we're going to be we're going to be focusing on is element or edge. Okay. So what are the differences here between element and edge? Well, the major difference is here. Element looks at something like say our scribe wall as multiple elements making up that edge. Right. And then the new software, the, the, the intelligence of this has this edge mode now. And now it looks at that wall, even though it's multiple points, it looks at it as one edge. So this would be similar to the offset scribe line function that we had in LT1. OK, that's offset edge. All right. Now, when it comes to overhang, that's kind of irrelevant because we got two point lines. It's one entity making up our finished edges here. So edge or element is, is really irrelevant in that situation. It comes down to back walls. Do you want to offset the whole edge or one piece of it? Okay. Now, 
so that's a little bit about offset there. Now, one thing you, one other thing you'll notice at the bottom of your screen here, we got offset element. It says offset one inch. We click where it says one inch right there. And this is where we could set it inch and a half. Okay. Now, do you want to keep the original line? So what that's saying is, do you want to keep the cabinet line on your drawing that you offset from and create this overhang? Yes, we do. We want to see that we added our overhang to it. And then here, this other button, revise style. Do you want to, if we turn that off, no matter what color we're in up here, it will make that line in the cabinet color because we chose not to revise the style. So if we turn revise style on, now we click that line, click out in front, and there we get it in the finished color. There's our inch and a half overhang. Now, now that I have that inch and a half set, I have my keep original on, I have my revise style on. This is one of the main functions I'm gonna use for add an overhang. So we can click on the quick action button up in the top right of the screen there. And now you'll notice there's a little add button up here at the top. So what the way we add things to this quick action menu is be is by being in the function with the specific measurement and the switches in the positions we want them to be in to execute this function. Okay. So here we are. We're an offset inch and a half, keep original, revise style. We hit the add button there on the quick actions. And bam, there it is. Offset element, inch and a half, keep original and revise. Now, one of the other amazing improvements that we made on the software here, I feel like I could tap and drag that. Oh, how cool is that? Up into my list and plop it right there. Yay. Now I can organize my list right here on my screen. Super easy. Um, now you're like, well, hey, how'd you get that one that's just called inch and a half overhang, right? I'm, I'm simple, man. I like simple terms. So we can click on the little dots right here and we can click edit. And now here I could come in and click on that one I just made. Pop open my keyboard here. Since I got my pen open, it's giving me writing. I don't want that. And so now we can type in what is, what is this? We can name it whatever we want. Okay. So you can customize all the names of your quick actions now to be what you want them to be. So they make sense to you when you're working through that list to organize all of these. Okay. And work as efficient as possible. Right now. Also, this is where we can remove them. So here, I'm just going to hit that little recycle, the trash can, boom, boom, it's gone. Because I got my inch and a half one right there that I created using my own lingo, right? Okay. So here, we're going to hit on that inch and a half. I'm going to add it here, add it here, add it here. Now, one amazing function that I want to show you guys is we have a notch function now. I know you guys are familiar. You run into this all the time. I'm sure. Maybe you fabricate these at your shop. Maybe you fabricate them by hand on site. Either way, I'm going to show you how we can do this. Either we want it on our paperwork or we want to send it to the saw to fabricate it. But we're talking about these pantry panels, fridge panels, and where we got that little quarter inch style sticking out here where we'd want to notch and then finish just that inch and a half sticking out right there. Right? So we're going to talk about editing that now. You know what? Let me set you over here. So I'm going to go to notch now. And now I'm going to tap the front first. Now you see, I got it created in my quick actions. Because I know my depth is a quarter. My offset three quarter. They're pretty much three quarter by quarter all day, every day. Right? Um, as long as the carpenter did what he was supposed to when he fabricated that, right? So I'm going to click front edge, then the side, then in, and voila. Look at that. There's my quarter by three quarter notch. Now, I like to do it now before I add my overhang because I'm going to go to color right now. 
and I'm going to pick panel. And then one thing you got to watch out for here is these little buttons, these little switches here. Okay. So it says style line edge is off. So that's going to give me an ability to just touch that one little piece of line right there and switch that to my panel color. If I had edge on, it does the whole edge to that, which really wouldn't have mattered in that situation. But I just want you to see the difference between that little switch right there. Because that, you got to watch out for that. It'll get you. It gets me. So if you ever see the whole line turn a color and you're like, oh, I didn't want to do that. Look for that little button right there. Make sure it's off. Undo my favorite button. And then we just can just click that little portion and get that to change. Now. I'm going to go right back to my inch and a half overhang and I'm going to switch back to my finished color and we're going to add our overhang here. Now, again, I want them to know to finish that little piece right there. If I try to fill it, this it's going to make it the panel color. Now I got to split it. I got to do other things. Now there's 50 ways to do this. This is my way that I like to do it. I'm going to go to draw. So our, you see our draw menu now in LT1, you might go up to the drop down here all the time. We can pretty much draw anything we want in this draw menu here now. So you see rectangle, circle, line, arcs, cross, bump out, scribes. We'll get into some of this. Um, here we got line mode. Again, down here at the bottom left corner of our screen, we got line and we see mode right there. We got one point angle, which would be just like your old LT1. Rotate to a line, draw a line at whatever angle you want in space in relation to what you're rotated to. That's one point angle. We now have one point perpendicular. If we're working off of a line, we can automatically be perpendicular off of that line, no matter how our drawing is rotated in space. And then we can do two point, right? So here we're going to do two point because these edges are in line with each other. Now they know to finish that little piece right there. That's why I notch it, then add the overhang, draw that little line. I feel like that's a pretty quick way to get that done. Now, the only thing we got to do here is fill it, the rest of these edges together. So in my quick actions, I'm just going to go fill it sharp, stove to fronts, inside corners on my little angle, wall to finished edge. There we go. Now, one thing I want you to pay attention to here. I'm going to undo that last corner and I'm going to turn on under view here. You see, there's quite a few different options here, but what I'm going to turn on here is my template summary. Some of you may be familiar with this from LT1. So now in the bottom right corner right there, you see where it says template summary problem with template. Okay. Now, if we look up in the top corner there where it says page top left corner, page three, it's got that little exclamation point down there with a the little warning triangle saying, hey, there's an issue over here. If we hit this check button right now, boop, it turns on display contiguous breaks. We turned them into circles instead of squares on this one. And now you see that little thing flashing down there saying, hey, you got an open corner over there. Let's go to fill it. Click that wall. Click that edge. Bam. Now you see. We got no issues found up there. And all of a sudden, our template summary popped up with our square footage and then our linear footage and our color code there, letting us know what all these edges are. Okay. So pretty awesome little deal there. Um, now, once we hit that check button, it does turn on contiguous breaks here, which is why you see them all still on that center line drop in. Now, one thing with this software is you might be saying, hey, Aaron, you had your cabinet line filleted there, but not the finished edge. Well, anytime this software sees a reference layer, a reference style on the perimeter of your shape, it will not consider it a complete shape here. Okay. It's only going to look for cuttable edges on the perimeter to call it a complete shape there. OK, so even before I added the overhang or anything, even though I filleted it all that together, walls to cabinets, it still said I had a broken shape because it, it will never look at that cabinet line as a cuttable edge, creating a, a, a polyline, polygon, whatever our saws look for. OK, 
So now we got to fix that corner there. Like I say, I'm just going to fill it that. Now we see that it's, there's no issues there. All right. So if you ever run into seeing issues found, but you feel like you got everything filleted, you might have a reference layer on the perimeter of your piece somewhere. Okay. And that's where it's going to show you your problem. All right. So this center line here, since those are all reference layers, we can ignore the fact that that thing has those breaks on it. It's no big deal. If you don't want to see them, we can just go to view. Again, contiguous breaks is what that is. We uncheck it. Now we can't see it. If you hit that check button, it turns it on. You got to go to view to uncheck it to turn it off there. Then. Okay. Um, now we got our overhang on there. Typically, next thing I'm going to do is draw backsplash. So again, one thing you're going to notice is you can add a lot more functions to our quick actions and speed up the editing here massively. Okay. So you'll see right under my overhang, because I do splash next, typically if the job's getting splash, I can click right on. I got four inch splash at 15 inch offset and it's using edge detection. What does that mean? I could just click once on the outside of that line. Bam, there's my backsplash. One click across the top, one click over there. There's our backsplash for that job. So as you see in the bottom left corner here, it says splash miter. It's got mode edge. So two point is what we used to do in LT1, right? Two point, we click that corner, we click that corner, we click over there it makes the piece a splash. So here, the edge technology, you can see it's a one click, one click, one click, right? And we get that splash up there, right? Super awesome there. Now, one thing, if you wanna revise the colors of that splash, right? Maybe you wanna set flat polish to the edges that concern you. Now, I'm gonna go here to the color button. So this color button on the side now is only there to revise or replace colors. So as soon as we hit color, we're in revise. Here, we want to make sure we're in the color we want to revise it to. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to tap on the top edge of that splash, outside corner of that, stove edges and the top edge of that. Now our guys know what the flat polish on that. Um, so once we do that, right, we got our backsplash. So typically I draw my backsplash before I start adjusting my walls because we want to cut this backsplash typically big. We install one piece of the splash we cut the other piece the size typically on site, right? So we always want our backsplash big based off of our walls before we do any kind of adjustment or tweaking to these walls for fitment, right? This stuff we measured right here is tight. We need to give our installers some wiggle room to make them happy so they can get these pieces in nice and quick, looking pretty, good looking results, and the fastest ways of producing these countertops, right? That's what we're looking for. So we added some really awesome uh, scribe line functions into the software here to try to utilize your guys' equipment, whatever equipment that may be, to the best of its ability. Okay. And so one of the things here, we're going to go to draw. And then down the list here, you see scribe line. And now first one here, if we look in the bottom left corner of the screen there, we see scribe line mode offset with taper. So offset with the taper, what that's talking about. This one, uh, this is one of my favorite. It's, it's uh, what I would call dynamic in the way that it works. So we have it offset to taper. We got max depth set to three eighths of an inch. Sorry, motion detection lights. We got max depth set to three eighths of an inch. And then this taper length, I have it at zero right now. But for this first one, we'll set it at three. Now, what this is going to do, we're going to pick the two walls that we want to straighten out and cut with our saw blade. Not with the water jet, not with the finger bit. We're going to check our gaps. So this is basically going to draw a line from corner to corner on that back wall there and corner to corner 
on that wall there. And then it's only going to move those lines, those straight lines in as much as it needs to, to clear the proudest and or worst part of that wall coming at us. So we don't have to cut any drywall. It's only going to move it far enough to do that. So all I got to do is pick my two walls. And then in the bottom right corner, you'll see the done button. We click done. And bam, it says scribe line offset of a quarter inch applied, even though my max depth is set to three eighths right there. It said, hey, I only need to move this in a quarter to get me clear from the worst part of this wall. Now, the taper, that three inch taper, you see that little piece of line coming off of our finished edge that's tight against the wall. It comes in at whatever angle it needs to at a three inches long, because that's what we set the taper to, to meet the straight line running all the way across the back wall. And now you see the black dashed line there is our scribe. So this is why we still want to scribe this drywall to see what it's doing. And then the software is going to work off of that scribe to give us the most efficient cut on our equipment with trying to give us the smallest gap that we could have, right? So if we scroll on down here and look at this, we see we're just in front of the wall right there. That's the bad part of the wall. Right now, well, what's the part? The, the, the wall's going the other way too, right? Well, how do we know what's going on there? Now, one thing to understand that max depth, it is not the max gap. Okay. Max depth is just how much it's moving it in to clear the worst part of that wall coming at us. It is not taking into account the wall going away from us. We got to check that. This is where I love parallax. So we're going to go distance, parallel. Now I can pick my scribe wall first, and I pick that new wall, that new cut. Hey, we got a half inch. That is not going to work for time, right? But for backsplash, three-inch backsplash, this will work all day. Or uh, three CM, I should say, backsplash. Standard backsplash, that'll work all day. Unless Mrs. Smith's going to tile her house in three years, then we'd still have a problem, right? But you can see we tried to make the software very dynamic to, to work these walls out based off of our scribe to give us as much as we can saw blade there. Now, if we look at this other wall, we look at the big gap there. Hey, it's only eighth inch here. Oh, we got three sixteenths there, right? And then it gets smaller. There we go. And I mean, down here, we almost got nothing, right? So. Well, of course, we have nothing because we have the taper coming in. But that first segment of wall, it's only 0.02 away, right? So this wall hardly got any gap on it. This will work all day for this backsplash, all right? So that's using offset with taper. Now, one other option we have, if because our saw, our finger bit, water jet, something's going to have to come in and do that little three inches and lead into that possibly. Maybe our saw blade can do it. Maybe it can't. Depends on our equipment. Do we have a finger bit that can do that? Do we have a water jet that can do that? Right? Let's say we don't. Let's say we just got a saw blade. Well, one of our options, that the back of the stove, we could have a little gap there, right? One of our options would be, I, we can also create these in our quick actions. So if you see here, I have a straight line offset. So I got the offset with taper set at offset with taper. My max depth is three eighths and I set the taper to zero. Okay. Now we're going to click those two walls. We're going to click the done button down here and bam. It says it only did a 16th because I clicked the, the, the second, the left wall twice, the uh, second. It, whichever wall you click last is the is the dimension it tells you on the screen there. It doesn't tell us both. Um, but now what you see, no taper. Straight cut all the way down the wall. But what's the gap there? 
right? That's what we're worried about. At the back of the stove with backsplash, is that going to be a problem? We go distance, points, old ball, new, quarter inch. going to be a quarter inch gap at the countertop. If we slid the stove in there, nobody would even know that, right? Now let's look over here. Over here is a finished open net. Ah, it definitely matters over there, right? But look at this. We're coming straight off that wall. It's straighten that whole wall out. And look at our gap. Whew. It says a 16th because we're rounding up. Oh, man. 0.0324. We're just above that 30-second, right? We're going to have a 30-second gap. Never touch any drywall. And a 30-second gap at the end. Straight saw blade cut down that whole thing with a 3 16th inch gap at the maximum on that wall. You know, so my wall back here is pretty bad. Hopefully we're run into more of those walls and we could cut straight lines like that with using the scribe line zero offset all day, tile, anything we're dealing with there. And we'd be under that, right? So I think you can see if you guys did this kind of stuff in LT1, you know, all the steps that were involved in this. Um, so you see, we made it way easier uh, to, to adjust your walls for fabrication, for the fastest fabrication with great looking results, right? Now that's uh, doing a scribe line offset with taper. Now a rake is let's say you got a bathroom vanity or something like that. So we can go draw a rectangle. Let's make it uh, 22.5. Right, 30. So let's say, for example, you draw a bathroom vanity. Going to make two walls here, two finished edges. And we want to rake. We want to pull that back edge in a quarter inch and make a straight cut, pulling that out of that back corner. Whether you measured it or not, it'll work either way. So we go to, we go to draw. We go to scribe line. We're in rake. We're going to set that to that quarter inch. One cool thing about this keyboard here, guys, is you could just tap on. I mean, I know four sixteenths makes a quarter. So you see, I could tap on a sixteenth four times and get a quarter. Or I could tap quarter. Or I could tap half plus a quarter and get three quarter. Pretty cool little keyboard there, little shortcuts there. And if you got some favorites, you can click that and, and make that a favorite. All right. Now I basically pick my wall. And now it's asking you with it with this mouse, you can kind of see that preview of that pink line. Do you want to go up and out that way? Down and, and in on the left, down and in on the right, or up and out on the right? Well, we want to go down and in. So we click down and in on that corner there. Now we pick the next wall. It understands what we want to do based off of what we clicked on the last wall. And we hit done. And voila. There you have it. quarter inch gap out of that corner, straight taper cuts. Looking pretty, throw some backsplash on there. It's gonna fit right in like a like a puzzle piece. And uh that's a quick way to draw vanities and rake them, right? But that's showing you the rake function as well. Um now in certain situations, it ain't gonna work too good. Depending on how bad your wall is, my wall is really bad four feet off of this. Okay. So one of the reasons why I didn't show you this here is because I got to do like, a, I want to say like a half inch and it might not even work. So it popped up. The offset rake will be intersected with the selected line edge. So it's telling me, man, a half inch rake is still not good enough to clear the worst part of my wall back here. So if I do that three quarter, let's see, I just add more, hit again, still won't do it. Let's try an inch. Holy cow, it still won't. That's how bad that wall is. So you see, I had to go an inch and a half out of that corner because of how bad my wall is over here. Right? So again, scribing our wall, the software is going to look at that stuff and say, hey, man, even though you want to cut this side at a rake, you're still going to run into the wall there. This ain't going to work. You're still going to be cutting drywall, right? So 
software is trying this is where this intelligence of the software comes into play showing us hey this might be what you want to do but you got to tweak your numbers here to get this to work right um so that's using raked last but not least we got single scribe tab dual scribe tabs maybe you guys know what tabs are maybe they're dog ears rabbit ears notches those kinds of things in your neck of the woods whatever you guys make call them um you know a lot of these scribe tabs a lot of times you're going to be needing a water jet to make that little inside corner like that right unless we've got micro finger bits or something like that to get those inside corners some of that stuff's hard to fabricate so what we could do here though if we have the water jet capabilities we can pick dual scribe tab edge on three-eighths of the depth and my offset, it's how big my tab's going to be. Three inches is a popular number I hear from a lot of fabricators. And so what I'm going to do is pick the, the uh, uh, select the first line edge of the scribe line. So I'm going to pick my left wall. And then it says pick the snap point you want the tab to start on. So I picked a first snap point right there. Oh, hold on. Let me pick the second wall. Then I pick my snap point. Then I'm going to pick the other point by the back of my stove right here and fall out. That little tab follows my wall tight, beautiful for the first three inches. Then it comes in three eighths. Now that it, that little line right there is three eighths all day, every day, because that's the value we set the depth to. So this one is not what I would call dynamic, like the offset scribe line, offset with taper. It's not dynamic like that. It's saying whatever you make that tab at is what you're going to make it at. If that tab isn't big enough, it'll tell you that, hey, you're still going to cut this tab, man, but you're still going to run into the wall over there. It ain't going to work. Okay. So now you see it tabbed us there and we can see what kind of gaps we got here. Again, you know what I mean? We obviously created a bigger gap there. This is where we go distance, parallel, just to refresh your memory. 5.8, we're dealing with 5.8s there. Still going to be under 3CM, right? But maybe you don't want to do that. This side over here, again, it's going to be 3.8s all day. Okay. All right. So now over here on this wall, I'm just going to do a straight line on that guy. Zero taper. We're going to a straight cut all the way across there. The wall bows out. So I'm tight to the panel there and I'm tight to the finished edge over here. A little bow in the middle. Now that's a straight cut, even though I scribed it and I can see I'm going to have no gap. Okay. Is there any questions or anything about scribe tabs or anything like that, guys? Or the scribe line functionality there? Does anybody have any questions about that? Okay. Um, so that's dealing with adjusting our walls there. Okay. All right, Gerald. If you want to tap in the little chat window, um, if you want to click on the little chat with everyone, if you look in the bottom right corner of your screen there, you see chat with everyone, the little text button, click on that, type in your question there. Uh, 
Do you see the little chat window in the bottom right corner, Gerald? Or is are you on a phone or something? That might be possible. Um, but if you click on your screen, even on your phone, you might see a little chat, little text message window. You click in there and you should be able to type your question. Um, all right. So I'll kind of move on a little bit more with editing here. All right. So now, uh, once we adjust our walls and whatnot, we're going to probably drop a sink in here. That's what we could do next. So we got our drop ins here. You see, we got our, uh, I got a, a couple in here. Now, if you look in the bottom left corner where it says drop in there, it's got the drop in. It's got three little dots at the end of the name, my diamond U134GU up. Click the three little dots there. That's where it opens up our drop-ins, where our drop-ins are stored. You'll see a favorites folder, company drop-ins, my drop-ins. My drop-ins is just this PC only, local, or only saved on this computer. Company drop-ins are saved to the cloud. When I was talking about we can log into any PC we want at our company as long as we got Raptor on it. If you put all those drop-ins in the company drop-ins, any computer you walk into and log into Raptor on, you're going to have access to all those drop-ins there. Okay? So, this is where we got these. Now, if you guys have drop-ins already and you want to import them in, up here under settings, I want to say uh, drop-in library here. You see up there's a general tab and there's a drop in library tab here. We can click on this. Um, and we can drag folders into here and drop them right into our right into the drop in folder here. Okay. So if you're in Windows, um, I didn't share my Windows deal, but you can basically drag this. Like you see, I'm dragging a file right onto here. I just drop it and bam, it pops these in here. And then it's going to start asking me about dimensions on these things, right? So this thing's saying that it's 418 inches. That's because it's metric, right? So we want to make sure we set it to inches. And then it's going to ask me about these layers, right? And so one of these things we're going to pick here it's got finished cutout. We're gonna set that at finished cutout, right? This is this is a yellow rough cut. Wall's fine for rough cut. Um, it's it's telling us what we want to bring these layers on. We hit next, and it's gonna import all these things here. Okay. And then if we go back here, we go to drop ins. We click the little dots. There's our little folder that we just uploaded right there. Okay. Bunch of sinks here. That little purple dot you're seeing at the front edge right there is zero, zero. We define zero, zero. That's the snap point as Anthony was asking if you guys understand about snap points there. So that is us defining zero, zero. That's, that's the software using the front center zero, zero snap point of that cutout to snap to our finished edge and intersection there. So check this out. This is one of the cool things about the new software. I think that I really like is remember I talked about this center line drop and we gave you that tagline out in the front right there because before the old one, you snapped it in there and it was short of the overhang. It was even short of the cabinet, right? So you had to, ex you had to do some extra clicks to extend that thing forward to create that intersection. Remember I talked about doing um remember i talked about doing i'm sorry that bbd beep just messed with me um i just lost my train of thought sorry about that 
So <laughs> what we're going to do here is the first step here. It's asking us to select the snap point to insert the drop in. So basically, we have an intersection. Oh, I was, uh, of course, it brings me back now. Snap points. When I was talking about measuring across the opening, we get a beginning of that line that we measure, a center, and an end. Every single line on our drawing has a beginning, a center, and an end snap point on it. Beginning, center, end. Beginning, center, end. Every single line we have has one of these. Now, as soon as we intersect other entities, with this front edge per se see we got a center snap point on this front edge but now we also have a snap point where this intersects here so that's why we gave you that little tag line out the front of the center line when you shoot it so now however much overhang some of you guys you know drop edge laminate guys maybe you're only doing inch and a quarter or something some standard 3cm guys you're doing inch and a half or maybe you're doing a miter edge on something. You got to give a little more, whatever, right? So that's why we gave you that that length out there. So it hits a lot of different overhangs. But now what I'm going to do, first it says select the snap point to insert the drop in. So I'm going to click that intersection right there. Now it says select a line to align the drop in. Again, don't matter how our screen's rotated. We're going to click the front edge, the finished edge, or the cabinet. Doesn't matter. Either one, they're parallel to each other, right? And now I'm going to click straight up above that. And there we go. Bam. Sink drop down. Okay. Now I have my setback down here. One thing you'll notice is we set the setback here. Okay. So I got it set to four inch, which would be our standard setback. And that's what it automatically put that thing back. Again, we can go distance, parallel, front edge to there on the money, four inches left to right across that. Right? So that's dropping a sink in there. Um, now let's talk about a seam. Right? So now we have many different seams. We're going to go to draw. And one thing about seam as well, you see, I got one even in my quick actions here. I click that seam right there and I got perpendicular. So now you'll see we got quite a few different seams here now, right? Before in LT1, you just had a color seam with a little checkbox. That was seam. Draw a line, extend it, do whatever you're going to do with it. Excuse me. Here you'll see we have many different options now. All right, so we got straight to point, perpendicular to edge, key notch left, key notch right, European left, European right, extended seam. Okay, so these are really going to be kind of situational. How do you guys fabricate? What do you got to fabricate with? What other kind of machines are you using on down the line? I'll make a little more sense once we get to what I'm talking about. But here's straight to point. I like to think of straight to point is my goofy. Goofy stuff. Okay. Let's say you wanted to go off the center of that 45 to the back corner of the drywall over there. You know, goofy stuff. We click straight to point. We click the front center snap point. And then we got a snap point here at the back corner. Um, and try again. This little pen. It's not like in my, let me try my finger. There we go. So that's me. Whatever angle that is, whatever distance that is, I don't need to calculate any of that. Center snap to corner. There's my theme. If that's what we wanted to do there. Okay. So that's what straight to point is. Perpendicular to edge. Definitely going to be a more popular one that you guys would use. I believe that uh, uh, the majority of people I've trained in the center right here typically come three inches out of this inside corner right here. So one of the awesome things about this perpendicular ed to edge is we added the option to turn an offset on. And, and most of the guys tell me they come three inches out of that corner. All right, cool. Three inches. Okay. And now all I got to do is touch that front snap and the back wall. Bam. Three inches out of the corner, 
straight to the back wall, no extending, none of this, no breaks. You just want to watch out. Don't click the old scribe wall. You could still click on the old scribe wall there and send it all the way up there. So when I'm clicking the screen here, I'm making sure I'm clicking below that red line. So I just go to the red line. Now let's say, oh, but Aaron, I want to go to the splash right there. Well, we could then go extend, click our seam, click the top of the splash, and you will notice that extend is backwards from the old software in this new one. Let me tell you, the majority of people that I've trained here, they click the way the new software is. Not We always had to teach them the old way, right? You may notice this. The new software, what do you want to get? What do you want to extend? Click it. Where do you want to go? Click the destination, okay? Now, just like in our other software, we got erase. So when we hit erase, that's where, again, it pops up the new little sidebar here. We got straight up erase, erase segment. Some of you may be familiar with that. Erase all. Erase segment is what we can use here to go point again using snap points because anytime we have intersections, we have snap points there. And now we're going to come down and click on this snap point and voila, we just broke that. Now we got a seam in the splash that lines exactly up with the seam in our countertop there. Okay. Or one other way would be when we draw that perpendicular seam, we can just go right all the way to the, to the, to the, um, to the back wall. So I can click that, or I mean the backsplash, and click the splash. Now I got it all the way up there. Now we just go segment. Nope, but you're going to want to make sure you're on the seam line. Bingo, bingo, bingo. There we go. All right. So we got a seam. We got a sink. We got our walls adjusted. We got some backsplash. Got a little notch done. And this pretty much looking like a kitchen here, right? Um. The only thing we would do now is pretty much start adding some labels to this, okay? Now, one thing you may have noticed, one improvement we made with this new software is let's say we are going to put, and you see my quick action, I have fillet one inch radius here. I'm going to throw a radius on that outside corner. One thing you may notice in LT1, if we were still in the wall color there, it would have made that in the wall color. That software is a little smarter in that aspect. It takes whatever color your edges are and makes it in that color. Okay. Um, so better aspect there. Now, one thing about dimensions, some of you may remember or know in LT1, since we just fill it at that corner, there's no longer a corner to click on. So in LT1, if we tried to dimension this edge and draw it on the page, we're going to be an inch short because we put a one inch radius there. There's no corner there to click. Well, with LT1, we fixed that. Now, what do we do to label this drawing? We're going to go to label. And here we have text. So remember I was saying distance is my site verification? Well, label is when I want to put dimensions on here. I want to put text on here. I want to draw the angle of that corner on my screen. I want to put the radius in words, letters on my screen right so that's where the that's where i kind of differentiate the difference between distance and label there so now here again text maybe you maybe you guys put stove on your drawing so i got stove there we have fonts in this software here as before you may notice in lt1 everything was about inches and in the size of our text now we actually have font we can hit large here i got stove we tap there it is we could undo spin in the window and still spin it around, that kind of deal. We can click here, pick pick it on the compass, drop our text on there, edge. So here for edge, definitely one of my favorites. Now I have this, one thing you'll notice, I have it in my quick action. So, you know, in LT1, you could only do drop-ins, uh, text, offset and fill it for quick actions in this there is a ton of things you can put in quick action if you can't put it in quick action the add button will be grayed out that means you can't add that to quick action okay but as long as you can see the add button you're going to want to make sure your measurement 
is what you want it to be. So I'm going to draw these dimensions. We can set how far away these are drawn. So I have my offset at two inch. Think of it along those same lines as the backsplash, how far away it was from the edge that we're referencing. We got two inch edge on specific offset on that two inches font style medium with this edge. It's one click. How cool is that? All right. Want to give overalls on the backsplash? How big is the backsplash? You want to give them that notch right there. Right. There's our notch right there. Now on this back wall, right? Or for my sink center, this is where I have one made in my quick actions where it's just got the A right there and says measurement. I have that offset to four inches and my font at medium. I'm going to bump that up to five actually right now. And so this is what I'm going to do to go point to point. And there's my sink center. Now I can come back here. Point. Let's do the seam to that scribe tab. And then let's do inside corner to my seam there. Inside corner to my tab there. Right. Show them this little three inch deal here. Possibly. See the 83 and, and 13 sixteenths. That should be a point to point measurement, right? So let's go point to point. Let's grab that point there, that point there. There we are. And so we can we can create these in our quick actions with different offsets. And that way we can stagger these so our 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 numbers don't end up on top of each other. And it's just a matter of clicking on your quick actions to execute which one you want. Very quick in editing, I feel like. Um, so this is just some of those little things you're seeing here that it's going to make our day go a lot quicker, right? Um, all right. So it's dimensioned. Again, we could do parallel here as well. So um, maybe you want to know, maybe you want to give them that sync to the wall over here. And then we click, we click sync, we click the wall, and then I'll click this top one, and it leaves that one on my drawing there. Pretty cool deal there. All right. Um, angles, you know, you pick a line, pick another line, tap the screen, gives us that angle right there. And you could set the offset to that and the size of those letters as well. Same with radius. You can tap on radius, six inch offset, click it, click down here, bam, showing us that little radius. So that one inch radius right there. Label pieces. So this is a new one. Pretty cool. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces here. So as you see, we got seven of seven. We're going to start with, with one. That didn't work. Come on, Windows. Give me a keyboard. Here we go. One of seven. We're going to auto-generate that. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, so now we can label these pieces and everybody knows how many pieces they're going to have for this job. Right, they're all inside the piece there. One other cool thing we added, the label. All right, um, that's pretty much dealing with label there. Now, and as far as making a drawing, I think that's about as, about as good as we're going to get there. Right. As far as information, transferring information now. Oh, yeah. One other thing. I know there's a ton of guys out there coming from sticks and glue, man, that love to put X's and O's and slashes and dashes and all kinds of stuff, because that's how their guys know what each edge is. They're not really on the color thing. 
They're more into symbols and this kind of stuff, right? So one thing we added here, which is very awesome, is we added counter edge labels. So here I can click on counter edge labels. And now you see I have an X next to my finished edges, a W next to my walls, theme next to scene. I got FCO, finished cutout, next to my drop-in, FP, next to my flat polish there, right? So that's real easy. Just toggle it on, toggle it off. Those will be printed on our shop sheet now, right? I know because a lot. I know I taught a lot of guys, man, how to sit there. And I mean, if, if you're one of those people that is sitting there and dropping X's next to every line, dropping W's next to every line on your drawing, man, did we just save you a bunch of time right there. Right. We've been listening to everything you guys have been requesting and doing our best to implement that into the software to make to make your guys' life as easy as possible with these kind of scenarios. However, you guys like to use the software here. Right. Because we all know you guys like to use it differently. Right. Um, all right. So. That is pretty much talking about templating and that kind of stuff as far as creating a basic template right there. Does anybody have any questions at this point about the templating portion of this here? I say, if you do, you can raise your hand. You'll see the little hand button in the bottom of your screen. And then if, or if you just click on the little chat, little text window there. Um, and so for, for what I'm seeing here. Right, it's the little chat window right there. You want to click on that, and then you'll be able to ask questions and whatnot. Okay. All right. So, nobody has any questions. Nobody was raising their hand or nothing. All right. Oh, thank you, Anthony. We are going to show you, right? So now what I'm going to go into is job details, right? So we definitely made this way better as far as what we've added in here. Still improvements to come on it. Well, obviously we're in beta. We've been listening to you guys. We got this built, threw it out there to you guys, let you give us some feedback so we can make it the best experience we can on this. Um, so here, starting out, we got job info, right? We got the name, account number, possibly. Where are we going? What's the address? Where's the pickup? Who templated it? What date did they do it? What's the customer's name? We got a pretty basic checklist in here right now. Where the sink, Was the sink on site? Are we providing it? Are the cabinets permanently installed, bolted to the wall, right? Are they level-ish, right? What's going on there? Um, Pounder tops cleared off at time of measure. Ha ha, that's a funny one, right? Um, we know that happens very rarely, right? So <laughs> did you check for backsplash issues? These kinds of things. We will eventually have these adjustable for you to pick the fields kind of deal. But we got something in here as placeholders, just kind of a basic checklist here for you guys to check out. All right. Um, material. So once we go here up in the top right corner, we can tap on the add material button there. And now we can come in and say, hey, this is getting 3CM. The brand is a good one. The color name is Carrera, however you spell that. Slab. We're going to say the height of this slab is 63 with 135. Now, here's one awesome thing we added on here, pages, right? We know you might have multiple pages, multiple different colors of material going on here, okay? So this is going to give you the ability to add each area to a specific color, to a specific material, okay? So we pick that page. We hit close. Now that page is there. We can pick a finished edge style. There's flat polish down here and a finished cutout, right? And then what's the primary edge, right? Maybe it's it's east. 
Oh man, was that bad? That's why we use keyboard. We can swipe type as well, in case you didn't know. All right, so there we go. There's one of our materials. So now we could just add another material and apply that to different pages and whatnot as well. Okay, so you can add as many materials as you want. If you don't want to, we got the little recycle button up here. We hit that and we delete it. So we got that one material, cutouts. We're going to do a cutout here. We're going to do a sync. Customer supplied it. It's on site. What page? It's going in the kitchen. What's the brand? Blanco. Model. That's a good one also. It's not a farm sink. It's got a four-inch setback. Only one of them. It's an undermount. It's negative. It's an eighth inch. Cutout size, we can give them a general idea. 29.7. Nope, definitely not on the height of that. Uh, let's say it's going to be 19 and three quarter. And then here we're going to do with that 29 and three quarter. Faucet holes. Inch and three eighths. We're going to just do one. Zero spread. Drilled on site. Any kind of notes you want to add to this cutout right here? Bam, there's that cutout attached to that page. And then you could add another cutout. Maybe uh, it's a cooktop or something going on that kitchen as well. Right? So this is where you can add all this information here. Tear out. Are you tearing anything out? Solid surface. It's, you know, 72 square foot. Going to involve some drywall. I'm going to need to hire a taper. We're disconnecting some plumbing, these kinds of things. Notes. So this is uh, overall general um, notes for the job. Right. So it's anything particular. You know what I mean? Uh, second floor for the island. Oh, I was close. There we go. All right. So that's the general overall notes section. Then here's our customer agreements. You guys might have used our agreements before. This needs to be loaded up on the website on templater.com. Okay. So here I can hit sign off. Basic agreement. Next. Printed name. Can't even spell my own name. See, oh, it ain't doing it. It's a little too much. So now we can sign off on this. That is one beauty about the pen on the sign offs if you're doing this with your customers. Love the pen for sign offs. We hit next. And here's where they can scroll through this. Say, hey, okay, you're not going to move nothing on me. Yep. Hey, you know, we got a couple blank pages. Hey, there's the kitchen. Hey, look at that job name, job number, template date, templated by the sink info. Is the sink on site? Yes. What's the model? It's a good one. Setbacks, four inches, right? Faucet hole, one, zero inch spread, undermount, negative, eighth inch. There's our area, linear footage, Chicago. There's a little QR code. So one thing about that little QR code, you could scan that with any kind of phone, tablet, whatever. It's going to take you to templater.com where you then could see this job and this, this printout as well. Okay. Um, that's going to link in a little more with our stone tags uh, where you can print tags out and print them onto the and slap them onto the, the pieces and whatnot. But this is our gener this is our agreement. We hit confirm and sign. There's our signature. We hit next, next, save it. Save this in this location here. Signed agreements. And there that is. Now you could also email this from here. I don't have Outlook set up. It's going to go straight up and open up Outlook. 
So if you have Outlook set up on your tablet with your, uh, you're logged in under your email that you're going to want to send this from, it will open directly into Outlook. And then you can email that off to the customer, to the subcontract, to the contractor, whoever is all involved with the project here. We could send that sign off to everybody. They see the template images and everything. They make sure they're happy. Okay. And that is the details portion of the app there. Now, talk about photos. So here we definitely did some improvements to photos, right? Um, I do believe I'm not blocking my cap. I'm okay. I can hit capture here. Now, one thing I got my rear camera on right now, I understand some of you guys, the default camera in the software right now is selfie cam. We're not here to take selfies, right? So we're going to hit settings, photo settings, and here is where we can pick our different cameras, okay? We're going surface camera back. You can set the resolution here too, okay? Now we go back, we're in photos, we hit capture, and this is where, you know, we again, we just tap on the screen to take the pictures. All right, and now, one awesome thing we did is you click this drop down up here. I can assign these pictures to this page. So we can assign all the pictures we take to each specific area. Right now we hit done. Reviewing them in our, our assigned page here. We can name the photos if we want. We could also put details in on the photo which maybe this is where um, we took a picture of the fridge scratch. And we say, hey, we can draw arrows. This is pretty cool. What color do I want it? Green, real big. We can tap the screen and drag up. Tap the screen and drag over here and say, that's where the scratch in the fridge is. Right? You can put text on these pictures here. Okay, um, we tap the screen, pop up our keyboard, say fridge, whatever. Now you can also hit move, and I can move that around and say, hey, the fridge is over there. Right, pretty awesome with the pictures here. So you can put notes in them, you can name them, and we can assign these things to the areas we're doing. We feel like we made a major improvement on our photos right here silly things like smiley faces right who doesn't want that on their pictures right so definitely a big improvement on the photos here that's the photo area um i think the rest of that's pretty self-explanatory um is there any questions about what we went over so far yeah no hey there might be something okay nope all right So there we go. We're taking pictures, um, doing all that. Now, nesting. We're we'll talking about nesting here. So we go into nesting, and this is where the first thing it's asking us in these column, in this column over here to the left, nesting settings. Use slabs. Do you want to use slabs, or do you want to actually try to nest these on a, on a shape, or do you want to just cluster them by their groups of each page, right, of each area? Do you want to add material offset? So what we're talking about there is if we're going to cut, if we're going to make two separate files there, one that we cut on the saw over cutting our edges that we're going to put a finished on, that we're then going to create another file to mirror and send to the router for the router to run it, its bits down there and remove that excess material that we left when we went to the saw. Right, so we overgrow things on the saw and we cut them down to finish sizes on the router, mirrored typically. Right, so this is where it's asking you do you want to add that material? Do you have a router or do you want to just cut final dimensions? Put some hand polish on there, call it a day. Right, so again, with material with backsplashes, do you want to add material to that? Do you want to separate the backsplash pieces? How far do you want to separate them? We're just going to make them an inch apart. Um, 
we don't want to add any material to our cutout. We're going to keep our drill holes. Now here is where we can name this um, slab, right? Sure. There we go. 62 by 135. We hit next. Pick the pages we want to create these on and hit create and bam. There we go. So this is basically telling us like, yeah, guys, you're you're going to need probably going to need two slabs for this. Now, the, you see those two pieces in purple right there. It's telling us that those two pieces are seen together. And now they are on two different slabs. OK, so it's giving you that warning kind of deal there. If there was other ones, they'd be named two and two, three and three, four and four, so on and so forth. Right now, this. We might be able to here do a little of this. Uh, if you look, I'm in editing on the right hand sidebar. We got nesting, edit, add a slab, delete a slab, reset down at the bottom. We got best fit. And down at the bottom right corner, we have snap to. I'm going to turn that on. You see those little pink lines right there? It's saying, bam, I can snap that there. I can snap it here. And now if it wouldn't work, you'd have that piece in orange saying, hey, man, you got to overlap here. That ain't going to cut it. That ain't going to work. But we can nest those like that. And we could bring this over maybe into here. No, maybe not. Doesn't look like it. We can rotate this around. Maybe that way. Nope. Maybe this way. Yeah. It fits. Just barely. As long as we don't got no vein matching going on here, we could cut this out of one slab. Okay. So as you see, we're still making some improvements to this to nest it as best as it can. Right. Um, but now one thing I was talking about, that material offset, if you look, there's two lines there. And that is talking about the offset that we're going to overcut on the saw and then cut the final on the router. Okay. So that's the nesting portion of this here. Again, there's no vein matching going on here. This is just on some generic colors, some generic uh, uh, patterns that we're not worried about that, or we can get a general idea of, hey, yeah, you know what? You're if, if you're if we're vein matching this job, we're definitely going to need two slabs to have any kind of chance of making these veins match up, right? Because um, who knows where these pieces might actually end up in these slabs, right? It might be looking something like that. Who knows how the material's running, right? Or even like this, I don't know, or one like that, right? Um, who knows? That's the beauty of vein matching, right? Um, so this software is not for vein matching. Again, it's just for nesting and showing you how many slabs you may potentially need. Give you a good idea on that, right? Now, once we get into production here, we can go up here to print. And this is where we can talk a little bit about stone tags. So we have uh, on the wall behind me here, right? We got our stone tag set up here with our little printer right there that we're selling right now. So you can get these labels. So I can go to countertop tag right now and I can hit it for both these slabs. And now here, bam, it already, it, it, I already got the printer loaded up. I got my, my, uh, my sizes here, okay, ready to go. And now you see I have one of three. Those are my countertops with all my little numbers dimensioned all the way around that thing. See, it's got my material. It's got my cutout on there. It says this is piece five of five, countertop one of seven, right? There we are. There's the third piece. Or second, there's the third piece. So those are the three pieces of our countertop there, all dimensioned and everything that we can stick on there. And then again, that QR code is there on this label. So we can scan that and that'll take us to templater.com. Okay. And we can see some of the jobs there. All right. So that's printing out to countertops tags. Um, 
There's remnant tags we can do here, obviously, right? If we got scrap on this, we can slap a tag on that, know what that remnant is, know what job it was used on. Um, backsplash tags, and then we got edge tags as well, to where it'll print us out tags. Uh, I don't have my mind set up right for that yet. Okay. Um, but that gives you an idea there of using the stone tags as well. And we can print them right out of here. Okay. Um, so we go back to templating here. And like I say, we go back to home. And then here's this job. If you look over there, it's, it had a little cloud right there. That's because it didn't sync my job up yet while I was in there. Once I backed out to the home screen here, now you see that it says last sync just now. I'm online because obviously I'm sharing my screen with you guys. So it uploaded the, my job right there to the cloud. Now you could walk over to any computer you own with this software installed, log in, pull that job up and start editing on your desktop or actually go over to the saw. Let's say we walk over to the saw and we're on that Windows computer because most of those saws got a Windows computer running them, right? We can install Raptor on there, log into that, and then come down here, open our job right here, and then go file, save the folder, the LT3 job, that is our LTC file, we call it now. Um, that is for our software. It's our file format. It can only be opened in our software, but that's basically your backup file that lives somewhere on a hard drive or some physical drive that you have at your shop there, or maybe it lives in Google Drive, OneDrive, whatever, you want to back things up at. So saving that would be your backup, backed up off of our cloud, right? So we can save one of those. PDF, what do you want to make as far as the PDF goes? We're going to make everything so you guys can see everything this thing outputs. Now, we can do photos either as PDFs or JPEGs. Let's face it. Pretty much every device that, that we're walking around with in our pocket can open a PDF. It can open a JPEG. Pretty much not going to be an issue there, right? But we want to add them to the PDF that we signed, that signed off on. Then we want to send them as with the PDF there, okay? CAD CAM files, this is what it's actually going to make DXFs off of. Technically, I don't need to make a DXF off my drawing page, okay? You know what? I'm sorry. Let me back it up a second. We still have CNC saw page. Okay. So for some of you guys that don't want to use the next thing, we got that job there. We go CNC saw page, pick just the page we want to make. You want to separate your seams two inches. Yeah, that sounds good. You want to keep any of the labels on your drawings. You can select those labels one piece per page if you want. Delete existing saw pages. If we screwed up one of them, we want to remake it. We can delete it automatically here and make the new one. Now, this really is the, is the meat and the potato switch here for, for most of you guys. The CNC output. As polyline, as exploded. Now, this is most saws want A or B. Okay. Exploded means it's looking at this multiple edges creating this shape as one line one entity here one line one entity here one line one entity here multiple entities multiple lines completing one shape that's kind of what exploded is looking at okay now polyline when we turn this on to polyline the saw your saw the other software is looking at it as one line making up the complete shape. It's just one entity, one line, as, as opposed to multiple entities, multiple lines, making that shape. That's the difference. Typically, if you guys have been using LT1, you know, you go over to the side, you go to open the file, nothing shows up, okay? That's because it's not fi formatted in the right way, all right? So we want to make sure that we format it in the proper way for our saw. Now, um, we have, we can give you that information. 
Okay, we have a sheet going on right now that is telling us what that is. We kind of have a matrix of that so we can tell you what your saw is looking for, right? But at the end of the day, I can tell you, make one one way, make one the other way, walk over to the saw, one's going to open, one ain't. And then you pretty much know what you're dealing with there, okay? If you just want to figure it out on your own. Now, we're going to hit create and voila. There we are. CNC saw page, cleaned it all up, left our edge labels there, split our seams apart at two inches, and now we're, we're clean and pretty, ready to send this to the saw and fabricate off of it. And we still have that drawing page, which is all of our, all of our dimensions, all of our labels, all of our information. So we can print this out as that PDF, and then we open this DXF on the saw and cut it, right? So now let's go, sorry about that. Now let's go files, save to folder. And we could pick all of these. We could uncheck CAD CAM for drawing because again, the drawing page is what we print out as a PDF for details. It's not what we open at the saw to fabricate from because then our saw guy's got to erase all the cabinet lines. He got to erase all the dimension lines. We don't want him wasting time doing that, right? So now we hit next. This is the job packet. What do we want to include in the job packet? You'll see what that's all about. What pages do we want to add? What layouts do we want to add nested? And then this is showing you where it's going to go. We have finish. It's going to create, generate all these documents and spit them out into a folder. Obviously generating a lot of stuff here, right? And there we go. So it opens it up in the folder here. Now, as you see, we got a whole bunch of folders going on here. There is some options in the, in the templating if you don't want it to create all these folders. Some people like subfolders. Some people, as coming from LT1, everything just ended up in the one job folder. If you go to settings here, and you go to uh, export, this little button here, top right under app output folder, that's where it's gonna be saved at. That's where you can change this. And then export folders, select how to export into folders with subfolders. They get all their own little folders, okay? You could turn that off and then it's gonna be every job, every, every job is gonna be, every document's gonna just be in that one folder, not separated and sorted like this, however you guys like it. So we try to give you some options here, right? Oh, you know what? I'm not sharing my screen, so you can't see my folder. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. Okay, so now you can see this my this my windows. Uh, this opened up right after I uh, hit that save button. This automatically opened up for me. Okay, so under CNC here, that's where we see our saw page at that we created there, right? And that's the DXF. That's what our saw guy is going to open and cut from. Okay, photos. Here we are, JPEGs. There's all our pictures. Shop sheets, right? So here we got job shop sheet. Give that a double tap. And here we are. You can see our customer signature up there, all our edges and everything here, right? Um, saw page. All right. Signed agreement. So here's the agreement there. Slab layout, layout one. Here's the DXF of them. Slab layouts, no dimensions. And then there's job packet here. Check out the job packet. So this is a really cool new document we came up with. You see, it's got every color 
of our finished edges here. Right. It's got our job. Here's our general notes, right? I figured I filled out overall general notes for the job. Second floor for the island. Here's our agreement with the signature. Here's our shop sheet. I know these couple pages are blank. There's our drawing page. There's our CNC saw page. Here's our nested layouts. Here's our photos. And then here's what we call the manifest. And it's got all the pieces with the basic dimensions around them. All right. Pretty awesome job packet. That's called the job packet. Really awesome deal. Then we have a nesting. This is just the nesting manifest, like I was saying that last page. This could be a favorite for people to print out just the pieces, all of them, so you can count them all. And you know when the installer is driving away from or loading up that job. Hey, you got seven pieces? Hey, we got seven pieces. All right. Hey, let's hopefully we get out there. We got everything, right? So this is going to help a lot with that. Um, so this is talking about, uh, there we go, export and saving that job. Now, that's why, like I was saying, if you want to walk over to the saw and just save the DXF right to the saw, open it right there. We ain't email nothing, man. You know, we didn't even send nothing. We didn't even do anything on Google Drive or nothing. We're just, we could have Raptor installed on everything, walk over, log in, save our files right to that machine and start fabricating off them instead of sharing things like that, right? Um, pretty awesome. Now, let's say you do want to email somebody something. Well, when you go to file here, you're going to want to save to archive or a zip. So this is going to zip it and compress it. Just like we do an LT1, when you email out an LT1, um, because we didn't have a cloud, right? When we email out an LT1, you would be... Uh, you would be zipping it automatically, okay? Because Google, a lot of guys, a lot of us use Google, right, to send email, maybe Outlook, maybe Microsoft, something like that. But that's typically go only going to give us 25 megabytes total of size of the file. So we compress it and zip it to make sure we never end up over that. Plus, it gives it a size to that zipped file, okay? So that's going to allow you to email and just attach the zip file right to it and email it out. All right. So now, again, we're going to hit next, next, next. And then it's going to spit this thing out zipped. And then this is where we just drag and drop to our email and send it. Okay. So that's, that's how we're either going to save it right to our device because we want to fabricate from it, print PDFs out. Something like that to add to the folder, add to the shop sheets. You can do that from here, that kind of deal. And so there you see now we got the zipped one right there. And this is where we would attach this to an email, right? Okay. Now that's pretty much living in the app here, right? So what else I want to show you here? We're going to get some infinity window here. Oh. Hold on a second. <laughs> I just closed myself out. Yeah. Let, me, let me do that again. Rookie mistake. Um, okay, here. So you have a website. The website is the cloud, LPI. So it's templater.com. That is your cloud. All right. Hold on. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you guys can't see my password. Sorry. I got to log into this. I use a password manager. I recommend one for everybody. I wasn't logged into it yet, or else it would have automatically logged me in there. Definitely. I use Dashlane. Not that I'm promoting that, but man, is it a lifesaver. 
I don't have to remember 300 passwords. All right. So here on the cloud here. I'm in my company here. Okay. And now this is going to be your company, your website. So you could see the first one here is jobs. And you can see that one right there, 16 minutes ago. It was updated. Right. So if I go back here to LT3, go back to home, sync that up, come back to the website here, refresh. Here we go. It was updated 10 minutes ago. That was the last time I, I changed anything, actually. And so here we can see, remember I was talking about scanning that label on our barcode, that, that little QR code, either on the stone tag or on that shop sheet. It'll pop you up to this templating and you could click on the page three here and boom, you could see it on your device then, right? No PDF, no nothing like that. We didn't email nothing. We scanned a QR code. It opened up our job right here on our, on our phone, on our tablet, whatever we got with us, right? Um, pretty awesome there. Now, we haven't gotten the, you'll notice a stone tag button here, a download button, a document button here. Eventually, we're going to have it to where, say, your office person coordinating your job scheduling and, and providing paperwork and these kinds of things, sign-offs and stuff. They could not have Raptor on their computer. They just go to the website, templater.com here, log in with their login, and then come right here and hit PDF document and download those things and print them out on the printer or download it, email it to the customer. They sign off digitally on it. You get it back and then save that into the job again here. Okay. So, and then download as well. We want you to be able, say your saw guy doesn't have to have the Raptor app installed on the saw right now you do if you want to do what i was talking about but we want to get to the point where you don't have to have the app there per se because he's not editing or nothing he just needs his dxf so he goes to the website right here goes to download downloads his dxf the only ones he needs opens them up on on the saw whatever software he's programming his cuts with and then boom starts programming starts making that job happen okay so that could literally happen in minutes, right? Your guy's out in the field templating, hot spots his phone, syncs up this to the cloud. The guy's standing at the saw, boop, he sees the file pop up on the on the internet right here, downloads his DXF and can start cutting that job literally 10 minutes after the guy templated, right? All never send an email or nothing, all just syncing up to the cloud. Pretty awesome, right? Now, so this is looking at our jobs. We can look at the pictures here as well, right? Pretty awesome there. Nested layouts, all this stuff. Now, we can see our drop-ins here. We cannot edit these at all. All drop-ins are edited and handled through the app, through Raptor, okay? Not the website here, but basically don't worry about drop-ins here. Profile. This is where you can come in and you'll see the name of your company. Here, I got I got Raptor logos there. Hey, imagine that, right? And I got a Laser Products Industry logo here on mine. That's, that's created on my shop sheets. So you could just click the little pencil right there. This is where you're going to import your company logos, okay? So you can import three different size logos here, large, small, and then your banner right there, all right? So if you got JPEGs, whatever you got that formatted, you can upload that to here. Check that out. All right. Now, it also shows you your subscription, what your plan is, all that kind of deal. Okay. Under profile, team members. This is everybody that's on your team. Right. These are all our trainers, software testers, these kinds of guys. Right. Um, so... Here, you'll see all your members. You'll see when when's the last time they were in here, right? What's their status? When were they added? What are their roles? Now, you, at this current time, you can hit invite user and you can invite other people straight through email to your company here, okay? 
If you want to add other people, want to give other people access, they want to get in here and start playing with this, see what's going on, invite them as a user with their email. They can log in their email, accept it, create a username, password, bam. They can download Raptor. Now, you're like, well, where do I get Raptor, Aaron? Let me tell you. Right here, I got a bookmark, of course, on mine. But Raptor, it's lt3raptor.templater.com. You can go right here, click download. Bam, downloaded, app installer. Here we go. It's going to ask me to launch it or reinstall because I already have it installed, right? But this website, lt3raptor.templater.com, you can go there, download and install this software on every single computer you own and log in with your login and you can use Raptor there. Okay, pretty awesome. Same, obviously, with the cloud, any internet browser, right? Um, so here we're showing our team members and, and we can invite them and see what their status is. We got lasers here. This is not seeing your laser yet. Still working on that. Activity wise, we can see when people log in, when's the last time they logged in, what were they doing here? Let's go to job workflow here. So this is something you guys may have noticed that's brand new in the software. And if you look here, I got say in design, design finalized, design approved, ordered, complete, inactive, archived, or installed. Now, if you look here, like once we're in, when we're in design, we want our guys to be able to edit, create, and delete everything. We're making it, right? So we need access to everything, right? Now, once we get it approved, once the design is approved, we can lock people out from editing the drawing, creating any drawings, deleting any drawings, creating any job details, editing any job, adding to the job. We can lock people out. So basically, once that's approved, hey, we ain't changing the scene. Ain't changing sync cutout, nothing. Hey, do not manipulate this template at any point beyond now because we got it approved. We're ready to fabricate. So this will actually lock users out from being able to do anything to that job once it gets to this status. Okay. So you see on the website here, this is where we set these up in the app itself. Here, you see this one's in design. You see, we got one here, design finalized. So I click on the three little dots next to that. We hit edit. And now here, next to job information, top right corner, bam, that's where we get these little buttons. If I hit design approved, save it. And then I hit into this job. Look it, I can't click draw. Can't, I can't do nothing. If I go to this page, I can't draw nothing. I can't extend. I can't label. Can't distance. I could check some distances. That's it. Because I set that status on this is approved. We are not editing this any farther. That's what we're cutting. Okay. So pretty awesome little deal we added into the software here. And these are all adjustable by you, customizable. Right. What what are your statuses? What are the names of those? So you can come in here and you can edit what the name of that is. What's the background color? What's the text color? Is it active? And then what can they do in those statuses? Pretty awesome little deal. We're excited about that. We added in here. Edge style sets. As you can see, we got Aaron's style. It's my style. Right. Got to have your own style. Default edge styles, default edge styles too, trainer edge styles. So you can make multiple edge styles as I was talking about in the beginning. If you guys do a lot of shower walls and you want to differentiate ceiling, floor, butt joint, mitered, flat, finished edge, uh, whatever kind of interactions or things you want to pass on just using colors, we could make a whole nother color set based off of that. So we either duplicate or add a whole new set up at the top of there. And then down here, we can name it. We can add a style. So we hit add style. And this is where we can create a whole new layer. What do you want the layer name to be? 
Remember, we talked about those edge labels, right? That's talking about the little words, the little letters next to our templates there, right? The X and the W, all that going on there, the FCO around our cutouts there. So that's where we're setting this label at. Um, and then what type of layer is it? Is it finished, unfinished, or reference? Remember I was saying, if this software doesn't see a finished edge or an unfinished edge on the complete perimeter of a shape, it's not going to look at it as a complete shape. If there's a reference edge on the outside perimeter, it will not look at it as a polyline or a polygon, a complete shape. Okay. And this is what it's using to know that. Then the color setup here. Okay. Sub layer type. And then we got colors. Got a lot of colors there. We put numbers on them now, right? I know when we used to open up LT1, man, you'd have this whole color thing here. And man, you, you could be three shades apart and have no idea. Or pick the same shade twice and have no idea. So we got numbers on these now to help you a little bit with understanding how to, how to adjust and, and create different colors more effectively. And then we have a bunch of different line styles. Pretty cool. Um, dot dash dot dot dash whatever phantom whatever that means right you got a bunch of different line styles you can pick now okay and then you see this little preview over here so right now i have it set at finished so it's showing us the outside edge of our countertop as being finished as as finished if i click unfinished look now the pink lines on the back wall saying, oh, you must mean an unfinished edge. That must mean the wall on the countertop, right? And then we got reference. We click on that. Now you see it put the line inside of what looks like our finished edge out there, right? So that's how the software is thinking and being more intelligent about these things, okay? So we can hit cancel right there. Now... As you see, this isn't the layer setup we used. What I did is, it, it, hey, if I don't want color, if I don't want my, I still want a cabinet color, but I want to make it my own color. Just click on the color, come in here and change it to what other color you want, man. Now my cabinets are light green, minty fresh, right? So you can just come in here. If you don't like this color setup or have a different color setup, you can come in here and just change what's already there. Not the end of the world, right? And 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 then we could come in here and say if there's some colors you don't want to use, just change the name, change the color to something you would use it as, okay? Or, of course, we can add more colors here. So, we again, we hit the add style and we could add to this, all right? And then one other thing about that, let's go to this mitered one. So we are talking about the details here, the little details button. If you see next to that, there's a pad button. Okay. So we got details for that layer. And then we have CAD. How does CAD look at this? Now we got kerf right there. So you see the kerf, it's showing us over there. Well, let me pick something that ain't mitered, actually. Let's pick finished. Okay. Let's go here. All right, because now I got turf and I got material offset, right? So turf is the gap it's going to put in between the overcuts to make sure that we do not uh, cut our finished edge when we go to nest these things. It's got enough material, right? Let's say a saw blade removes an eighth inch of material, right? So right there, we got the kerf set at eighth inch. Because we know it's gonna the, the saw blade is gonna cut on the outside of these lines and it's gonna remove at least an eighth inch of material when it does this. So this is how it knows to nest them, how close it can get them without causing interference, right? Some of you might be thinking of like common cuts or something like that, right? When you try to do common cuts on some of these saws, it's gonna say, Hey, I know my blade is this wide, that's how much I'm gonna remove. So we're gonna snap these two straight lines together and make a common cut down there. That would be kind of how this is is looking at that. And then we got material offset. 
So this is where I was talking about adding the extra material to a finished edge, right? And that's what we're going to overcut that piece on the saw. And then we're going to mirror it, throw it on the router, and the router is going to remove that 3 16th when it runs 7 bits down that edge to put an OG edge or a double bull nose or something like this, right? Okay. So that's talking about the CAD. And then down there at the bottom, we got DXF export layer name. So when we save this file and we go to open it up in any other CAD software that can look CAD or CAM, that can look at DXFs, it's going to look at this layer, this color, and, and automatically say that's finished. Okay. And that's what layer it's going to put it in. That's what layer it's going to come in as finished. Now, if we are going to import a DXF into LT3, here it says DXF import layer names, finished, eased, EP, eased and polished, right? So it's going to look, if you bring a DXF into the software, it's going to look for a layer either named eased, finished, or EP. It's going to assume, our software is going to assume you want that layer on this color. Okay. So that's what the CAD's about, what it exports the layer name as, and when it's importing layers, how, what is it looking for keyword-wise to automatically put it on those layers? You know, when we drag those drop-ins in there, it had 0 0.03 symbol. Like, what does that mean? You know what I mean? That's those, those sync guys, you know, that straw and that stuff. They don't put regular things on there that make sense. So a software could understand how to import that, right? That'd be too easy. So that's talking about edge styles here, setting those up. And then here, agreements. This is where we, we can add our customer agreement here. So we go to agreements. We hit add agreement up in the top right. We can name it. We can make it required. We can add a description. We can, add, we can make sure there are signatures attached to the job, the layouts, the photos. And then here is where you'd upload, say, excuse me. My apologies. Here's where you'd upload a, a dot text, right? If you're working out of LT1 and you had one in there, you could literally copy, paste right in there. Same deal. Okay. So you got to add it here. In, in this portion here on the website, you got to add agreement to be able to go into Raptor and to be able to click on agreements, sign offs. That's where they that that you got to put them in the website before they'll show up in the app here. Okay, and that pretty much takes us to the bottom of the web. And I want to say that pretty much takes us all the way there. I think. Does anybody have any questions at this point? Could you review staging address for manifest? Staging address for manifest and stone tag. Um, Oh, uh, so under profile here, so you have the ability to add multiple locations, right? What is this location, right? Is it staging? Is it, in, is this, th this is like, if you have five shops, where is that going, right? Who's fabricating that? What store? Right, what 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 place is that job attached to? That's where the staging comes into play here. So we can put the what is the address type? Is that where we is that where we fabricate? Right? Um, is that where the job staged at to be ready to be installed? Right. Um, and we can set that here and then put those addresses in here, all that good stuff. And then this way you can then in Raptor, 
when we're on the home page here, we go to edit this job. This is where we'd be able to change these pickup locations, these staging locations. So then we could see that on here. Now, Anthony was saying on the countertop tag, you see at the bottom center of that tag right there in blue, it's Chicago. So you, you that's where you could set that different background color, right? Right now it's blue right there. Um, and that's why it's showing blue there. So you could have five different colors for your five different locations, make it real easy visual, right? Um, so that's if you have multiple locations. Okay. Any other questions? Does anybody have any questions at all? No. Okay. Well, hope this was very informative to you guys um hopefully this can get you to the point where you can open up the software and you can start using it start doing some templates with it start practicing possibly before you have some training um that might be one-on-one -on -one. of course you know we offer if you haven't experienced it yet we do offer web training individual web training so it'd be similar to this as where you can see me on the camera typically we would like you to have a camera on your end set up and then we'll actually have you set your laser up and measure a kitchen, measure something in your showroom. Go out to a job site. Let's measure that house together in Raptor. Okay. Using the power of TeamViewer, which many of you may be familiar with using TeamViewer. If you can hotspot your phone, hook your tablet to the phone. I can then see your screen. And then if we FaceTime or even join a Google Meet through our through our phones right here. I can see exactly what you're trying to measure and I can walk you through measuring anything. Okay. This is a huge benefit to the customers. We've educated a ton of people on the internet doing this through webcams and this kind of stuff. Your education, right? Education never ends, right? We can always get better. So anytime you guys are doing anything, one-offs, sync, sync, uh, uh, you want to learn how to template a sink. You want to learn how to template a tub deck. A shower wall, a fireplace. We could set up a two-hour individual session to, to specifically teach you and what you want to accomplish and what you want to do and hopefully give you the confidence to go out and execute that or do it with you on site. And then we verify everything and we're happy and you're, and you're going to be confident that you can execute that next time. That challenge comes up. Okay. So please reach out for any individual training, any web training, on-site training as well. We do on-site or we do it in-house here also so just to give you guys a quick view if you haven't seen we got a little fireplace going on over here bat wing kind of kitchen here right obviously you know the world famous brown kitchen if you've seen any of our videos before we got a tub over here we got some shower wall shower uh mock-up over here we have some steps a couple fans because it gets hot up here and then we got another kitchen over there with a farm sink in it. Little angled island. We have another U-shaped area over here, right? So we have quite a few things to teach you guys on in this location here. So a lot of people have been, been uh, finding a lot of benefit with coming here. You get away from the shop. You get away from the phone calls. You get away from the guy walking in every five minutes asking you a question. You can come here and just focus on learning for that day or two, and we can just hammer that out, get you good at it, practice again and again, discuss anything you guys have questions about, and make sure, again, you're confident to go out and execute when you get back home. Okay. Um, of course, again, my name is Aaron. Thank you guys so much for attending this. We will be sharing this uh, um, recording with you guys. Okay. If you want to email, and request it you can email maggie or christina um and they will be able to provide you with the link for that but this is will be recorded and will be shared with you guys it'll probably end up on youtube as well okay so again thank you so much for being laser products customers joining our family i don't know you got a problem if you don't call us 
So please reach out to us with any questions, any issues you have with your laser, with your software, anything you got going on. We're here to help you. All right. Thank you so much. Hope you have a great week. Take care.